Hello and welcome to Dream Infinity Studios um, video tutorial. This is one of my first video tutorials, so kind of bear with me in terms of how I speak and just you know how I kind of go over my first very own tutorial. Anyway, we're gonna first go over the infamous grunge tutorial from my site, and I want to get into even more specific details um, than the online version that I've done in the past. <clears throat> so here we go. We're going to jump straight on to it. The grunge text um, effect kind of works out in a matter of chance. You kind of have to play with it. You kind of have to do a lot of adjustments, um, just basically moving things around, um, using the right brushes and everything. And we're going to go all over that. But for now, this tutorial kind of focuses on using the fundamental aspects of type and photography. The grunge text effect works first off by the right kind of font. The fonts that really work out real well are thick fonts. Um, not too thin. Stay away from like dingbats or um, you know comic sans. I mean you can go ahead and use them but um, you know thick fonts really work out well because it really shows the texture on the text aside from all other stuff. Now don't get me wrong I have used like really thin text before and it works out sometimes it sometimes doesn't all up to you but for this tutorial we're going to use a really thick one called impact and I am using a 72 point impact font and I'm just going to place my type here and I'm going to duplicate this layer just to have an option of um, going back if I need to to readjust and I'm going to hide this layer now as you can see I still have the layer of text going text going I'm going to go into my stock photo library in Adobe Bridge and I'm going to choose a nice photo that ha that's really flat and that sh really shows um, texture. Um, some of the good ones are like pictures of walls, floors, um, all these you know various things. Um, you can find some free stock photos online if you don't have any or just go out and take some pictures and bring it into the computer if you have a digital camera. So I'm going to choose this one right here. This is a picture of some table with uh, paint splatter on it and on this photo I'm just going to select all copy control C and then close it that's all we're done we don't even need this photo anymore now we're back to the original document and we're going to hit control V for paste or command V on if you're on your Mac and boom the picture shows up now what we want to do is with this colored photo what we want to do is we want to desaturate it um, so what we're going to do is image adjustments desaturate or shift control U then after you're done as you can tell the photo is black and white and we want to do a color and uh, contrast and brightness blast and that you go there by going to image adjustment brightness and contrast and then you want to set, set the legacy option on and blast the contrast all the way to maybe like 95 it really really depends on your pictures now I'm going to change the um, brightness also and I'm going to try to get this ink splatter texture out so I just set it there. Now as you can tell, if I go all the way to 100, the picture becomes a black and white drawing. You can do it that way, but I prefer to kind of give it a little bit of a little mid-range um, gray tone going, like for here. Now I know there's like this black outline and it kind of looks ugly. Don't worry about it. It really won't show up uh, in the long run. Now hit OK. Now we first have our very own black and white texture. Now one thing that I should learn from my own words um, of saying back it up is I didn't back up the photo. Um, the best thing to do is back up the photo. So I've desaturated the photo. I should back it up. Hide that one because we're definitely going to go back to it and maybe adjust the brightness and contrast again. So let's quickly adjust the brightness and contrast. Do that, that. Then we're going to go into the blending mode. Um, as you can see I have the backup. Um, after you got all that done, we're going to go into blending mode and go to screen. And you can already tell the changes are going uh, going into effect. Now, screen just basically put this, made this picture transparent. Ignore the black and put the white as a highlight. Now, as you can tell, it's already creating some dirtiness. And what we want to do here is try, we can also invert it to um, change the white to black and black to white and get a total different pattern going on. Now one thing I'm going to do right now is change the size of this photo. It's a little too big and I want it to cover I don't want it to cover too much of the text. So there we have it. 
now we got some nice gray tones going also I'm going to re-invert it back up I'm going to find a little nice area where I can kind of use it as a kind of a dirtiness of this font so maybe here yeah that should do it now this part's kind of getting unreadable especially the C part I don't know if it's uh, C or G maybe so I'm going to go in and adjust it now the eraser tool and the brush tool both work hand in hand as a brush tip so what we want to do is go to the eraser tool go to your brush window if you don't have it up windows brushes and then we want to go into one of these palettes a really good one is for instance is the 39 scattered brush 27 and we want to really squint this down now we want to also go into shape dynamics and change the size jitter we want to change the size jitter to maybe about 70 and maybe mess around another good imp another important thing that we want to change the setting is the angle jitter you can set it up to 50 percent um, 50 percent works out real well now you can already see this little splatter happening now going back to the brush t shapes we can change it we could change the diameter to bigger as you can see as I move this it gets smaller and bigger I'm gonna make it as big as possible okay now I'm done now this is a currently the eraser tool and now I'm just gonna kinda erase out to make the text a little bit more legible there now we could just erase this whole thing out well leave, you could leave that now we're gonna go back in here we're gonna duplicate the layer use other parts of it we're kind of recycling the other places so here's another area we can use there now remember how we saved this we're gonna duplicate this and we want to reuse it again but this time we're gonna keep the backup again show it up brightness and contrast blast the contrast up oh wait we have to use legacy and now I'm just looking for very simple, you know, spray kind of look. So somewhere around here. Now you can tell that before I had the brightness down really low to get this ink splatter thing going to see how that works. But now I wanted to kind of just, just use a little subtle area. So for instance, like here. So I'm going to hit OK. Blending mode, screen, again. And see how that works out. Now again, we might have to adjust the size, so I'm just going to... I'm just going to go ahead and do that. If you don't know how to adjust the size, control, I mean, edit, transform, um, scale, or you could just press control T and you'll be able to control both um, angles, uh, scale, and everything um, all in one shot without having to choose different options. So I'm going to choose something really cool, for instance, like right here. Now I'm going to duplicate this again, or just hit Alt and press the up key. And I'm going to um, hit invert and use the use the use those um, use the elements that used to be black that are now white as a texture. Now it's already starting to look pretty good, isn't it? Now I'm going to erase some parts again using the same um, eraser tool with the same tip brush tip. There, we got something going. Now I'm going to go back to the original, and duplicate this layer, see if I can use some other places. I'm going to try rotating it, control T, and just rotate it around. So we could get some differentiation going. Oh, there we go. That's starting to look nice. Maybe not. So we'll just go back up here, down here and erase this part. There, there you have it. We already kind of got the whole dirty thing down. The next tutorial is going to focus on ink splatters, meaning we're going to create some ink splatters as well as other texture to spice this uh, grunge up. So, part two video tutorial on grunge text effects will cover all that. Thanks for watching.